use Simpson's rule to estimate the value of this definite integral. So here's the formula that you need. The definite integral from a to b of f of x dx is approximately equal to s sub n. And s sub n, according to Simpson's rule, is the width of the rectangles divided by 3 times f of x0 plus 4 times f of x1 plus 2 times f of x2 and then it alternates from 2 and 4 and then 4 f of x3 plus 2 times f of x n minus 2 plus 4 f of x n minus 1 and then the last one is just f of x n. So the first and the last y values you're not going to multiply by any coefficient. The ones in the middle, you're going to start with 4 and then alternate between 2 and 4. So first, let's calculate delta x. Delta x is b minus a over n. So we can see that a is 2, b is 10 in this example. And let's use four rectangles. So we're going to say n is 4. So delta x is going to be 10 minus 2 over 4. So that's 8 divided by 4, which is 2. Now let's create a number line. So because n is 4, there's going to be 4 sub-intervals, but 5 points. And you can see delta x is 2 here. Now, for the Simpson's rule and the trapezoidal rule, we're going to use all five points. So it's going to be s sub 4, and that's equal to delta x, which is 2, divided by 3. And then it's going to be f of 2 plus 4 times f of 4 plus 2 times f of 6 plus 4 times f of 8, and then plus f of 10. Now keep in mind, f of x is x cubed. So 2 to the third power is 8, 4 to the third power, that's 64, and then 6 to the third power, that's 216. 8 to the third power, i got to type that one in. So that's going to be 512. And then 10 to the third is 1,000. So go ahead and type in what you see. So the value I got is 2,496. Now let's calculate the value of the definite integral using integration. So let's integrate x cubed dx from 2 to 10. The antiderivative of x cubed is x to the fourth divided by 4. And if we plug in 10, it's going to be 10 raised to the 4th over 4, and then minus 2 raised to the 4 over 4. So 10 to the 4th power. 10 times 10 is 100, times another 10, that's 1,000, times 10, that's 10,000. 2 to the 4, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, that's 16. 10,000 divided by 4 is 2,500. 16 divided by 4 is 4. And 2,500 divided by 4 is 2,496. Now this is one of those rare cases where these two answers are the same. But in other cases, you'll find that the Simpson's rule is a very good approximation of the value of the definite integral. So you can use it to estimate the area under a curve or evaluate a definite integral if you're given a problem with a data table. 
And so that's it for this particular problem. Now let's work on this word problem. The data table below shows the instantaneous velocity of a car every five minutes. Use Simpson's rule to determine the displacement of the car in the first 30 minutes. And also determine the average speed of the car for the entire trip. So first we need to calculate delta x. So that's going to be b minus a divided by n. So what's a and b in this problem? Well the interval is the first 30 minutes so a is 0, b is 30. So it's going to be 30 minus 0 and then what is n in this problem? Well n is the number of intervals. This is going to be one interval and then 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So n is 6. And 30 divided by 6 is 5. And we can see that it's spaced out 5 minutes every time the velocity is being measured. Now notice that the velocity is in meters per second and the time is in minutes. So we need to convert delta x from being in minutes to seconds. One minute is 60 seconds. So 5 minutes is going to be 5 times 60, which is 300. So that's what we're going to use for delta x. Now you need to know that the displacement is going to be the definite integral from a to b of the velocity function with respect to time. And so we can estimate that definite integral using Simpson's rule, in this case with six sub-intervals, so n is 6. So s of 6 is going to be delta x, which is 300 seconds, divided by 3, and then the first point is going to be f of 0, and then it's going to be 4 times f of 5. Now keep in mind, these values, that's basically the time in minutes. But the y value that it corresponds to is going to be in meters per second which will cancel with the 300 seconds. So it's going to work out this way. And then it's going to be 2 times f of 10 plus 4 times f of 15 and then 2 times f of 20 plus 4 times f of 25 and then the last one is just going to be f of 30. Three hundred divided by three is one hundred. F of zero is twenty five, and then it's four times f of five, which is twenty eight, and then two times f of ten, that's thirty two, and then four times f of fifteen, which is thirty, and then two times f of twenty, that's twenty nine, plus four times f of twenty five, which is twenty six. And then f of 30 is 23, based on the table. So this is equal to 100. And then 4 times 28, that's 112. 2 times 32 is 64. 4 times 30 is 120. 2 times 29 is 58. 4 times 26 is 104 and then plus 23. So let's just go ahead and plug this in to a calculator and get the final answer. So S of 6 is going to be 50,600 meters. So that's the displacement of the vehicle in the first 30 minutes. If you want to convert that to kilometers, simply divide by a thousand. A thousand meters equals one kilometer. So this is about 50.6 kilometers. Now let's calculate the average speed of the car for the entire 30 minutes. 
the total distance that the car travels is going to be 50,600 unless the car changes direction which we have no indication that it changed direction the velocity is positive if the car stayed in one direction the displacement and the total distance will be the same if the car changes direction displacement and distance will not be the same now average speed is equal to the total distance traveled divided by the total time and so the total distance traveled is 50,600 meters and the time is 30 minutes but we need to get that in seconds so we need to multiply 30 minutes by 60 seconds per minute so 30 times 60 that's going to be 1800 so the average speed using the answer that we got from Simpson's rule is 28.1 meters per second now let's compare that answer to the answer that we would get if we simply found the average value of all the velocities in this table so if we add 25 28 32 30 29 26 and 23 and then divide by those seven numbers the average velocity will be 27.6 meters per second. So these two values are pretty close to each other, which means that those answers are reasonable.